stuff. I still hear me. Can you talk, Dom? I'm talking. All right, we're good. And I think, yeah, I think we're all good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we were going to talk about um, GLTF and why it's cool and why do we use it. And so we were I, we were looking at the GLTF website, the Kronos website. Yeah, if you were wondering why we were scrolling through that. Yeah, so we were talking about GLTF as a format. Um, but basically GLTF, and we've talked about this a little bit on previous streams, but GLTF is kind of the the JPEG of 3D models. It's, it's you know, uh, a standard that um, is, that kind of more and more people are starting to use. Um, it's optimized for runtime. So a lot of other 3D formats um, are kind of more optimized for authoring time or for editing. Um, GLTF is specifically optimized for runtime. So it, it's all the data in a GLTF is kind of ready to take and then upload directly to the GPU without, with minimal processing. Um, so it's like really efficient to, to be able to use for real-time applications. Um, and yeah, you can see uh, there's tons of people using it. Um, uh, the format is quite quite easy to parse and read. I mean, the, the other problem with a, a lot of other formats like FBX is a completely proprietary format. And so any loaders for FBX are kind of like this reverse engineered mess of, of stuff. Uh, GLTF is like a really straightforward format. All the, all the data that is not um, you know, mesh and, and image data or whatever is, is all in JSON format, like all the metadata is in JSON. And then all the, the mesh. And so that means you can basically edit it as a text file. Yeah, yeah. Which is pretty uh, rare which is really for, useful image, for, for, for image formats and, and 3D formats in general. Usually it's a bunch yeah. of binary garbage you'll never understand. Which is really, um, so the, the, yeah, the text format's really useful for debugging um, and, and that sort of stuff to, to be able to look at it and, and edit it uh, by hand. Um, and, and a lot of times early on, like before we had the Blender exporter, for example, like we were just editing them by hand to add components, which is, which is definitely useful. Um, and then also we've gotten questions about like, what's the difference between a GLB and a GLTF? Um, so a uh, GLB is just a GLTF kind of with all of its external assets bundled into it. Um, so normally you'll have a GLTF file, a bin file, and then maybe some image files to go along with that GLTF. A uh, GLB just basically takes all that data and puts it all into one file. Um, they're semantically exactly the same, like a GLTF and a GLB both have all the same features. They can both do all the same things. Um, but a GLB just can put, brings all the files into one file. Um, and in hubs, um, we, uh, we use GLBs for everything. So like when you're uploading an avatar or when you're importing an asset into spoke or into hubs, or when you're creating a scene, um, those are all GLB files just because it makes it a lot easier to, you know, to deal with not having to deal with multiple files. Cause you know, if you have, um, a GLTF, you might have images and those images might have to be in a directory. And then we kind of have to preserve that directory structure when you upload it. So it's just a whole bunch of, uh, we avoid a whole bunch of, um, kind of confusing, confusing things stuff. And also, with. also yeah. user error of like, oh, exactly, yeah. you uploaded your file. Oh, but did you drag in all the textures? Oh, I forgot about that. You know, that right. Or like you dragged them in, but you didn't, you dragged them in when you were inside the folder instead of outside. So now the reference, you know, the paths are different, like all sorts of, all sorts of ugly stuff that, that can happen, um, by having all these separate files, uh, by putting it all into one file, um, you know, we avoid all that. And, and we actually do stuff where even though like for an avatar, I mean, this is totally like internal stuff, but like for an avatar, when you give us, like you drag in the GLB, we actually then turn that into a GLTF um, right, right in the browser. And we upload a GLTF. This is for like caching reasons. Um, but like we can, it's very easy to switch back and forth between these two formats. And so, like I said, like um, we always have our input format be GL, uh, GLB but that doesn't mean that we always serve up GL, uh, GLBs. Like sometimes we'll use GLTS for certain things because having the files split up means that we can we can cache them. And so for avatars specifically, the reason we do this is um, you know you might have multiple avatars using the same mesh but just reskinned, um, and that way we can the browser can cache the avatar mesh data separately from the you know the texture data and the and the, the maps that you're reusing. Anyway, this is a whole this is a whole. Uh, so I think, but like, uh, basically GLTF and GLB are exactly the same. You can convert freely between them. There are a bunch of tools to, to do that. Um, so when you see that, you know, we talk, whenever we say GLTF, uh, we kind of use them interchangeably. Right. So and GLTF, if somebody, GLB. let's say you have a, a, an artist or, you know, a client or somebody says, oh, hey, we're trying to get this thing into VR or we're trying to do this thing. And uh, we have all the models and here's, here's these GLTFs or GLBs. We don't know what to do with them. That kind of stuff comes up. Um, if you do need to convert from one format to another, again, go. I, I encourage you to go to the Kronos uh, website here. Y there are links on this page, especially uh, down toward the end, of all kinds of, uh, you know, converters and ways of getting it from one format to another. Um, if you just look up these references and stuff. So, um, uh, 
fortunately, uh, you know, things like Sketchfab do some of this stuff automatically, which is really great. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you upload a file to Sketchfab, all you have to do is wait a little while. Sometimes it takes minutes. Sometimes it's like, you know, like half a day. I don't know what, you know, it's probably server load and things like that. It's probably like a queue, yeah. Yeah, but like I've had, you know, a model. I, I drag and drop my, you know, my FBX or whatever into Sketchfab. I set it up. And then you just wait a little while, and they already generated a GLTF for you. Uh, so if you tell somebody to download it or you download it yourself later, um, it's 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 awesome. Uh, you know, today we're yeah, actually going to do that. And, and that's the way we're able to just directly import Sketchfab models into hubs is because they expose this this GLTF version of each model. Um, we can we can actually pull them in, um, which is which is. 